Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to the YouTube channel and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hello, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Caelan Russell and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Sean, I'm the patent mechanic. Hello, my name is Marco, I love to go. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them two best students. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment if you want and we will get back to you. So in for repair today we have our Cavernland plough, we have our NC brusher, we also have the John Deere 7 20 and we have the Mashio 6 meter tiller. Uh, first of all we'd like to say a big thank you there to everyone there who gave lovely comments there about Paul Blake last week. He was a very important part of Finnegan's farm and it was a very important part of this man's life here. So just from Mark and myself, from everyone here at Finnegan's we'd like to thank you all. Thanks guys. So first of all, we'll head across here to Sean who has a bit of bother there with the Mashio Teller. So we're just doing a few daily checks on our routine checks on the harrow there before we brought it out. We needed, just want to level a few tracks in there and some of the spud fields. And we greased it all up and we found a problem. A big problem. Yeah, so it was a big problem. We just checked the play here on the rollers there because some of these have gone before on, on, on the other machines and we had them. And we did a lot of play in this side here. And in actual fact, it was the burden was completely so we gone. Just, we took the roller out of it. It's easy to take the roller out of it. Now, might be Sandy Ball back in. No. <laughs> I say we'll have to loosen some of these side plates. We put it out there. We got the bar there just to prise them out, and the roller came out handy enough. What I'm looking for is. I hear you there. See it? See that slot there? That oh. bearing, we can whack it, and it will rotate. I should pop into that. Floor. I'm not, I'm not sort of old. I want you can see him doing that slow. I should have it. Ah. See the way if I'm not in line with the slot. It has to be in that area there. Well. And see the cone. There's the cone. If I can get a shot at it. Yeah, perfect. Good. Just keep a new steady for me. So we found that one of the birds was completely banjacks in it, and this was all that was left. So we had an inside shell, uh, and or an outside shell, and we had an inside shell, which you actually had to get the gas bottles and take it off because it was completely seized on it. And this is our housing. Now, you can see the two housings here. You can see the height difference in the hubs there, and that one is completely knackered, while that one is okay, we think. We're going to put a new bearing in that. That side was okay, but the, the fact that we had a half, Sean, might as well do the boat. Yeah, might as well do the boat because it's, it's as easy to take it off. The housing themselves, this, this one was... Banjax. Where is Southern? Well, here's Southern here beside it. So, as you can see here too, we have a lot of wear on this side. Sorry, on this side and this one. This is the good one and this is the bad one. Now, there was still grease in it and it was still taking grease, but there was some amount of, we'll say, the fine dust. The fine dust had got in behind it and there seemed to be a lot of that packed in it, yeah, didn't there? Yeah, packed in it, yeah. So, now there was a seal, but the bearing is a seal, and we're not just quite sure if maybe at one stage, I often seen a little bit of wire or a little bit of twine get hit yeah. around that, the rope around that, and it would actually wear a little bit of a gap, the gap, then the dirt would get into the gap, all of a sudden then it's in the top of the bearing and your bearing would fail. So, it's important always to check that the end of that um, is always clean. So look, we're just going to have to tip off now up to WVD, get the new bearings, going to get a complete housing and a new bearing, pop them back into it. Yeah, and hopefully that should be all right. Well, we have the other side as well, so we're not yeah, quite sure whether if we have the problem this side, are we going to have the problem the far side? Something, yeah. But look, no, we're going to have to play we'll keep, an eye we'll keep an eye on it anyway, yeah. Okay. So, I see the tiller has moved from the workshop, it's now outside, and the lads are just doing the final checks on it. Well, Sean, what are you checking for there? Just checking for right here, Paul. As you can see, there's a wee line there. We're just going to yeah. dip one out. We're going to lift it up there. We'll see that we have. Yeah, so we have yeah. the gearbox. It'll only probably fill up to maybe half of there. Now, it's always important to free out the breeders here as well. Yeah. Because if you don't feed them, free them out, what will happen is the oil 
they come out through the seal here on the side of it. So yeah. we breathe them. It's uh, we'll have that done, and then we we'll give the 250 bit of a wash there, and she'll be ready for the ready for the field there. And hopefully we'll have Cahill heading for the field there tomorrow. So we'll uh, send them off there. Yeah. No, no, make the difference. Then we we'll do it. So we've the sweeper back again. Went up to the cattle yard a couple of days later. Arrives back again. Don't know what them lads be up there, Sean. They're, 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 they're very hard on machinery, yeah, isn't they? I thought it was John B, but then the hell was cattle. John B actually has nothing to do with no, the cattle, gee, so we I can't we can't blame him this. Yeah, side. yeah. But the keyway went here, we put a new keyway into it, and we've that fixed. Of course, then we decided we'd uh, to take this out, and then there's a welded nut on the inside of that that the bolt is threaded to it. Strapped over. And of course, so it's, it's hopping gone. Around. Yeah, it's hopping around, so the nut has gone. So we're just going to get a bolt. Now, we probably have to measure it the correct length because there's a plate here on the back. It's your shaft. Yeah, and the, on the shaft side, which doesn't allow the bolt to right through. So, you know, nothing thick and simple with these jokes no. anyway general rule of thumb but anyway we just have to get the bolt in chain on make sure she walks guard on and off she go again yeah. probably be gone for another week or so and then it'll be back again So we have our 7A20 in, the arms wouldn't go down, seems to be a recurring problem on the John Deere, wouldn't go down on the 7 8, 10 um, last week, yeah. and we fixed the seals in the rams and it's perfect. And then we had the 7 8, 20 in and we thought maybe it was the same issue, maybe even a seized pin. But we took the pins out and the pins were free, weren't they, Sean? Oh, yeah. As you can see here, they were grease and... and uh, all, all them took grease. They all took grease, yeah. It? So the four pins, so we, as we always check, is we check the top and bottom on the cylinder there to, to see that the pivot points, that there's no um, well. that no wear, that the, the, the nipples are working, they are all working and they're all taking grease. Now, what we did find was we had a lot of rock yeah. in the, the cross shaft coming across. And we had in one of the comments there last week on the 7 8, 10 that that might have been the issue with that. But it actually wasn't the issue with that tractor, but it certainly was the issue with this tractor. So this is a tractor we bought in. We don't really have its previous history. Um, I know they can give a lot of trouble here with the weight of the arms themselves, even running on the road. Even yeah. when there's no implement on, you get a lot of uh, jigging up and down and it can wear the bushings in it here. So the handiest thing to do was to take it off to take see it exactly off. what it was. Yeah. Bit of a stripping on this, no? It was, Paul. Yeah. It was, yeah, uh, but it's You have to be just very careful. It depends on, on the bar axle here. And because these are the cones, we didn't want to take the wheel off from, from, the, from the shaft here. So we took the outside of the wheel off and we have the tyre the remover there, which is a great job yeah. to do them they very do safe. And we're able to roll it back nice and gentle. And we actually put it back on and we brought it over to the wash bay and give it a good washing inside. Yeah. So we have all our parts over here on the pallet. The cross shaft itself. All right, we're good. So we have all our parts here on the pallet. The cross shaft itself looks to be not too bad. No. A little bit of wear maybe on the end of the splines, but that's probably through time. And the arms themselves. I think we're probably just going to get away with it anymore. Yeah. Now we have often replaced these on the bigger tractors because with the weight hanging out of them, the will wear, and this is the first part that wears. And sometimes you have to change the cross shaft. Generally, when you when you have the two of them more, you'll change cross shaft and arms. Well, yeah. on this tractor we won't. But as you can see here, look, this is our bushing. It's a kind of like a polypenko bushing, and there's not a whole lot left. No. So we hope now that it hasn't just done too much damage to that and here's the one on the far side. So this is what can happen. And these sit across in here yeah. and then they go into the housing on the cross shaft. But I'd say we'll turn that 90 degrees power, will we? Yeah, we'll give that a spin there so yeah. the weight, so the, the wear might be, if there is a little bit of wear, it won't be on the lift side, it'll be on the back ah, side. Yeah, yeah. It's not head. So. so yeah, look, just have to wait. Now we've bits ordered up for it and we get them ordered up, get them back into it and hopefully that will solve that problem. It, yeah. So just went to take the 7 8, 10 for a spin here. Hopped in. And I see we've got a new grammar seat. Now, not very, very comfortable, 
I hope the front suspension is working on the tractor because this thing is like a rock. But anyway, going to go over to the bench there. The lads have taken the seat out of it and let's see what's going on. Well, Carl, a bit of an issue with the seat, is that? Yeah, the seat out of the 7A10, we noticed there was a bit of a play in it. Yeah. So um, we and took the seat out the back window and we took, took it apart and we noticed there's, there's rollers, plenty of play. Yeah. There's play in the rollers and there was one roller that was actually not there it was where it's supposed to be. Yeah. The roller was gone completely. Now, this one is not a grammar seat. No, it's I an think American it's seat. A, yeah, it's a... Here, it's Sears. S Sears, that's it. It's yeah. Sears seat on it. And we can get replacement parts for it. I think it's about 150, 180 euro or something like that for new, I think six, we need six new rollers. Yeah. Um, and that should, should do, because it's a fairly high spec seat. There's something yeah, else now we've seen, an air seat, yeah. Look, at it, it's... It's all over the shop there at the minute, but we have Cahill here who's on placement for the next couple of months, are you? Yeah, next 16 weeks. Next 16 weeks, yeah, and he's on machinery and learning to... Learn Just a bit of everything, yeah. A little bit of everything, learning all about machinery, learning how to drive it. First of all, it's most important you learn how to fix it, isn't that it? Yeah. And you learn how to break it. Fix it use it. So, uh, yeah, look, we're going to let him uh, walk away at the seat now. The bits are that once we get them back in, we can re replace them bushings. Yeah, we'll try uh, yeah, the, and the rollers back in. Put the rollers, that hopefully should... Put, should Fix it up. All right, hopefully. <laughs> Wheel back on the Cavernland plow. We did turn the tire around. Doesn't probably make a whole lot of difference, but there was an awful lot of wear, as he says, on the on the roadside, as you can see here. So now we've just turned the tire around. Now we had to take it off to do the tire, which is take them four bolts off, strip it out with new bolts, new nuts, new washers. Everything's come back. Um, yeah, look, it it seems to be running. It's definitely running on on the rim inside here, and possibly a bit of pressure on the bolt. So. Just not quite sure. We just have to keep an eye on that there, just to see that that it doesn't happen again. But for the time being, there it seems to be it seems to be good, and we'll have that back into the eight four ten, which is sitting proudly here, and that's John B's baby. So we we'll get that back in and get him sorted. So now it's time for tips, tips and tricks. tricks. Tips and tricks. For this week's tips and tricks, we've make here. What's going on here, Mike? Now this is a side panel off um, seven eight ten. Yeah, and these clip down the bottom all, and on a pin, and there's a spring underneath, and then they lock on the top. But as you can see, they hear this one's buckled. Now a trick, heat gun. This might take a minute or two. Who buckled the Mike? Huh? Who buckled the? I'll call it uh, JB John B. Yeah. <laughs> Heat it until it's a bit of giving it. We'll get you to do that, Sean. I need to get down as far as we can. Go on a little bit. Hold on. Get a little bit of heat here on the sea. As you can see there, the side is twisted. We probably need a bigger grip. Stop you feel up. the giving it down, bring it. A little bit up that way. Try that and see what it's like. Yeah, it's actually a bit better. We'll try it on the tractor, but it has come a bit. I don't want to force it too much because that stuff will break off and you know, it can be brittle. We let it cool a little bit. Oh, we stick it on and see. So, last week's mixed mystery tool was in fact a pipe cutter, and we had quite a lot of correct answers. The first three came in from Dylan McCormick, Andy Murray, and Stu Buttle. So, well done, lads. It wasn't a very difficult one, but the fact that this is so small, it was for a particular job, yeah. wasn't it, Mick? Yeah. You the 6930, I don't know, is this steering or front suspension? One of the steel pipes going out to the front. And as you can see there, you know, if Carl can get there, there's a pinhole there. Someone blobbed a weld on it there, wasn't it? No. And there's another one there, you can see how heavily corroded it is. But this is very tight up in the chassis. And this just worked a treat. Now it's slow, 
but it's clean. That's the whole beauty of it. Because after we put a two, uh, two fittings joiners, new piece of pipe, and yeah. joined it up. It's a bit of a job to get that pipe out, and the fact that it's in the chassis rail, this, a lot uh, of crap. And this pipe is going all the way down the back of the tank, yeah. right, the, behind the fuel tank, plus it's going down up into the front, under the radiator and all that. Uh, taking that out? No. Mick, I thought you would have took that out. I would have, yeah. No, thanks. So Mick went for the handy option. Of course. This is a bigger mm -hmm. option, isn't it? Yeah, do, both do the same job. The only difference with that one there is you have a pair of rafters for um, cleaning the pipe. The inside, yeah. Yeah, but that's not the problem. Very handy, too. Right, so this week's Mixed Mystery Tour, what are you going for? You must be running out of them at this stage, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good yeah. to be torture. I don't think you'd ever run out of them. So, actually, the guys use that. It's an today. easy one. It's an easy one, yeah. Yeah, to be fair. We're going easy on people this time, this weather. Not like me to get, you know, to go too easy on you, but anyway. Well, that didn't get an easy life. It's already been welded twice. Right, lads. So the next three correct answers will be on the board next week. And we'd like to comment there where actually your comments are coming from. Mick uh, wants where to Where in the know. world are you? Where in the world, yeah. Like well, Stu Buddle. That, that you, used to be a programme years ago, where in the world, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where in the world are you from, lads? And obviously Just the nice correct answer. All right, best of luck. Slight tweak every time. And there's our cut. And there's the beauty of it. It's very neat and square, particularly for olives. Because we're putting a uh, fit on over that. We want the olives to be nice and tight on it. So that's it for this week's workshop Wednesday. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. That Keep the channel going, guys. So do subscribe. And uh, yeah, from everywhere here at Finnegan's Farm, we talk to you all next Wednesday.